I'll get it for you. Where's Elizabeth? Good evening. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the George and Joyce Ween Jazz and Heritage Center. My name is Kia Robinson Hatfield. I'm the Director of Programs, Marketing, and Communications here at the wonderful Jazz and Heritage Foundation. We are the nonprofit organization that owns Jazz Fest, and with the proceeds raised from the festival, along with other raised funds throughout the year, we are able to fulfill our mission and invest those, those funds right back into Louisiana communities. Thank you for being here. Give yourselves a round of applause. Appreciate you. <laughs> uh, tonight, of course, we are here for the Tom Den Congo Square Lecture. This lecture serves as a platform to commemorate the legacy of renowned poet, essayist, cultural activist Tom Dent, who played a significant role in African American arts and culture in New Orleans. This lecture typically fit features prominent speakers and scholars who explore themes related to African American history, culture, and the arts, reflecting Dent's dedication to preserving and celebrating African American heritage. We're just going with the flow, y'all, as you can see. <laughs> That's what I love about New Orleans. Dent's dedication to preserving and celebrating African American history, his impactful contributions to the cultural landscape of New Orleans and beyond are honored and perpetuated, fostering continued discourse and appre appreciation for African American traditions. This evening, we have the honor to acknowledge and celebrate an icon. As Big Chief Victor Harris steps back from his role as a significant figure in the black masking tradition, we know that his dedication to upholding and showcasing this tradition has left a lasting impact on a cultural landscape. And his departure will undoubtedly be felt by many. As he moves into, the, into retirement, his legacy as a respected leader an ambassador for the black masking Indian community will continue to inspire future generations and ensure the preservation of this rich cultural heritage. Leading tonight's discussion is gang queen Teresa Crushon, who has been in various groups for over 10 years. Her remarkable journey in the spheres of art, media, and literature showcases her unwavering commitment to creativity and meaningful storytelling. Teresa has made a significant impact as an author, documentary producer, and the CEO of Nolan's Art House and Afrotopia. Her work, notably the book Malcolm X, reflects her dedication to amplifying mar marginalized voices and addressing crucial social issues, earning her well-deserved accolades and recognition within the industry. Through her endeavors in black masking Indian tribes, in various media platforms, Teresa emerges as a beacon of inspiration and influence in the arts landscape. Everyone, please, please welcome Gang Queen Teresa Crushon. I'm uh, so full of joy right now. I'm so full of joy right now, I can, tears will come to my eyes. It is also a very sad moment um, for Big Chief Vic uh, to retire because I don't know if you all realize this, our, the community that Thread is uh, going to be uh, uh, transformed, um, his son, Lil Vic is taking over the tribe. Uh, we are delighted to have that new energy, but we're still going to miss our big chief. Um, we love and adore him. So we're coming tonight, a gathering of good friends, people who have masked with him um, many, many moons ago, um, people that have uh, participated in various cultural activities, and folks that just know him behind the scenes. Lots of great things happen behind the scenes, as you guys know. Our uh, chiefs do more than uh, come out on that special day, Carnival Day, and uh, they represent uh, a large community. They're fighting for our rights still. Uh, so you will hear some of these stories as uh, people uh, open up and share 
uh, their history and the connections with uh, Big Chief Victor Harris of the uh, Mandingo Warriors, Spirit of Fayaya. Uh, I'm gonna have the panelists come up here. Uh, Big Chief uh, Tyrone Pye Stevenson, the, Mo the monogram hunters. Yeah. His beautiful wife, Queen, Big Queen, Denise Smith, monogram hunters. And y'all, people look so different in their suits. I tell you, and we, we were out there last night, and all of them were on Cut Up and Clown. Yes, they were. Yes, they were. And I'm so happy that they made it here. We have uh, Big Queen Eleanor Rukia Brown of the Creole Wild West. And we have uh, Big Chiefs and Big Queens in the audience. And uh, we have uh, Big Chief's wife, Miss Christine. And next to her is a legendary guy, always behind the scenes. And uh, I go blank sometimes, I just forgot his name. But I love, this, I love this young man because when you need these people to help you make it to the streets, they are always there for you. They never tell you no, especially at the last moment. And for anybody who masks, you know how serious that is because you want to look right. It's a, a serious aesthetic and uh, some people will tell you, mm-mm, it's not good enough. Your feelings may be hurt, but you better bite the bullet. And, and this is a culture, uh, it's very vain, um, very cutthroat, but you have to humble yourself at the end of the day because there's only a handful of these master craftsmen that are around that can teach you in, uh, how to do it right. Okay, I went to the University of Minnesota. I went to, uh, what, the New School, Parsons School of Design. None of my professors are hitting it like the folks here are in New Orleans. I'm gonna keep it real with you. It is what it is. So uh, you're getting a whole like uh, mentorship program and they're not getting paid. They're not asking you for anything. And when you show them love, they show you more love. And um, there's no financial uh, price you can put on the education that they are giving you. And it's more than popping that needle and thread, trust me. Okay, uh, I'd like to start with uh, Mr. Stevenson, hi. Can you please tell us a story about uh, when you masked with Big Chief Victor Harris when you all were with oh, wow. Judy Montana? Well, wow. Uh, as a as a kid, growing up in the Seven Ward on Polga Street, around the Indians, and uh, I mean the heart of the culture with with with, with Big Chief Tooty. Uh, when I first started massing, my my affiliation, with, like I said, was with Tamarine and Fan. Uh, we was playing all ball, basketball, football, all that, and. Was, what was so important and what stays in my heart is that back then, what we had back then, we don't have now. We had mentors. For example, a lot of y'all, talk, we talk about fire, y'all, man, they go worry, but he was also a football coach, basketball coach. He was a mentor and a big brother to us. I mean, we couldn't be hanging on corners and was part of the culture. And these guys, he'll walk around the corner and tell her, what you doing on this corner? You know what I'm saying? You may to go home and so, you know, but my experience with Vic, with the Yellow Pocahontas, a lot of people know fire, yeah, yeah, man, they go warriors, but you should have been on top of your game if you follow Big Chief like that when he was a Yellow Pocahontas. You understand? <laughs> when, he, when it was a yellow Pocahontas, it was suits this guy made. And everybody had their, their choices who they looked up to. I mean, I could go in, in, in Chief House when he, when he was messing with, with, with Tootie, we was messing with Tootie, and go in his house as a little boy and seeing the stuff that they were doing. And it was like, okay, man, Vic, man, Vic, 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 Vic. I'm like, man. And when I got the chance, the first time to lay my eyes on him in an Indian suit, he masked under Tudor as a flag boy. There'll never be another flag boy like that. 
There'll never be another flag boy like that. The man sowing was beyond his time. You know, as soon as that he made as a yellow Pocahontas, y'all see the suits as a man, they go work. Y'all will never see those suits. They're hidden in time. But, I mean, Vic, in my heart, could always be my big brother. You know, I mean, he was a, he was a mentor. He was a person that, okay, we could, we could, any way he seen us, it was nothing but love. You know, it was nothing but love. I mean, he taught us a whole lot of things. I mean, when we used to sit there and try to make Indian suits and go around Vic with cardboard and, and newspaper and all that, and you know, he wouldn't run us, you know what I'm saying? He would like line us up and put us in positions. Okay, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, we had, we had something back then that we didn't have, that we don't have now. We had love of the culture. And a part of that is gone out the culture completely right now. You know what I'm saying? And what I think is going to have to happen, but we losing a great one again. We lost a great one. We losing a great one now to his retirement. Thank God for that. God hadn't called him home, so he's still going to be around in the shadows. You know, so it's like we don't have this anymore. We don't have this anymore. And, and, and the culture was about love back then. It ain't that. So we got to get back. Every chief that's still here, you got to get back to teaching your tribe, putting the discipline in your tribe. You know what I'm saying? Add one apple, sprawl a whole bunch. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, if anything ain't right, you got to nip it out the way. You know what I'm saying? But back to Fire Yaya. -ya. One thing I'm always remembering in my heart about Fire Yaya, -ya, and sometimes I get a little emotional with this. Uh, you know, and what it is, it's like the most important thing I'm going to, this, everybody, what I'm about to say, y'all need to put this in your heart. Y'all need to put this in the newspapers. Y'all need to put this in the books. Wherever you're going to put it, put it in the museums. Let me tell you something. Ain't no man ever did with this man when I'm about to tell you what he did. He took a culture and made another culture, you understand, in the same culture, if, if that sound right to y'all. Nobody never did that. I'm, nobody never did that, man, you know. I mean, we, we had the great one, Tootie, Tootie, with much love and respect, but nobody took a culture and put together another culture within the same culture. Go ahead, go ahead, Chief. So you got to respect that. Right. Got to respect right. that, man. You know? So, I mean, like I say, man, a lot of y'all know Fire Yaya. -ya. You want to get to know the real Fire Yaya -ya and know more about Fire Yaya? -ya. Do your research because it ain't just started with this. The man been here since the beginning. And still here, you know, always going to be my brother, always going to be love for a man, because guess what? Without him, I wouldn't be sitting here right now. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be sitting here right now, man, and my heart get full because to know that I had people that was around me that cared about me because the Seven War wasn't a place to play in. It was real, you know, it was real. Education was our first thing. You know, we was on, but we had so much negativity around us, but to have people like that, you understand, that then seeing it all, and that could keep you away from certain things, and you still here today, man, nothing but love, Chief. Nothing but love, man. Nothing but love. that that pie touched on, uh, or we can just dive into that right now, because what Big Chief Victor has done uh, with his unique style. Brother ain't never been to Africa, but I sure in the heck can't tell. Uh, when they're a rolling carnival day, I'm like, wow, look at that. Look at those Kari shells. And it's not just the shell that is on the suit. They're beating in the shell, around the shell, through the shell, up and down, flipping it. I'm like, what? Show me how to do that. I went to his house, Kim came to my house. I'm like, what are y'all doing? How do you do that? I'm like, I don't like this, it's too much work. Queen Kim was like, just be quiet. You're gonna learn, I'm gonna teach you. Just, I'm gonna show this to you and you will get it. And she did. She came over there, she showed me a few times. So uh, they got folks in the tribe that are, will work with you to make sure that you get it right. Uh, uh, Chief uses bones. He'll cook a meal, and the next thing you know, he got the bones hooked up on his suit. I'm like, wait a minute. You kidding me? You look, go back and look at them pictures, you're going to see. I'm not lying. I'm not lying. She's not lying. <laughs> <laughs> the Rafi, what have you seen unique? 
Oh, that what? you yes. From him? Yes. Uh I, I, y'all got a few minutes. Y'all got a few hours or maybe a couple of minutes. Go ahead, Jeremy. Uniqueness. First of all. <laughs> um I don't I, can y'all hear me? Yeah. Alright, so I don't need this microphone. Oh, online, okay. Uh, <clears throat> can I get everybody in here to visualize with me? Please. Before I start talking about the great Victor Harris, fire, yeah, yeah. Uh, I need everybody in here to just visualize for one second so you can see why he does what he does. Okay? Uh, imagine a slave. That's running away and escaped his or her master. That slave is running around that bayou land or, or that swamp or, or, or those woods uh, with the fear of God in their faces and body, the actions. Uh, that slave runs into. Uh, a Native American, okay? Some people would say Indian. Uh, and that Indian sees the fear of God in that slave and they embrace him, take him in. Because uh, if his master catches him, it ain't gonna be nothing nice. So, as years pass or as time passes, that slave and that Native American, they become in unison. And they create what y'all see right over there. That man over there, that great man over there as well. That's my dad, that great man right there. That great man over there that's dressed so sharp, Mr. Spyboy, Ricky. Oh. And that great man right there, <laughs> who's responsible for Mr. Fayayay continuing to do 59 straight consecutive years. So for 12 months out of a year, we sit down at a table with one needle and one thread. We put those beads on, y'all. Check his suits out, one bead at a time. Check his suits out. Check his out. Check hers out. I'm sorry, queen. Check mine out. One bead at a time, paying homage to that. And like my dad said, touching in on, on what you said, chief, uh, he took that three-dimensional seven-wall style that came from over here. And he changed it. I didn't want to say change it. I don't know if that's the right word, but he, he took what he knew and followed his soul. Y'all, this is deep. I've been around this all my life. I'm a hunter. He is a hunter. He is one of my teachers. Very few teachers at that. The man cooked fried chicken necks. Aren't you? <laughs> he laughing, y'all. Fried chicken necks. And me and Lil Victor, uh, which is a very close friend of mine as well, which is crazy how my dad and Mr. Victor Harris uh, have been close friends since I was a kid. They are... Uh, I told Lil Vic, I was like, man, this ain't chicken wings. This ain't thighs. He said, boy, you better eat that. So we ate chicken, chicken necks, fried chicken necks. I get y'all now. We really did. If y'all have, have anybody ever had fried chicken necks? Uh-oh. Few. Few. It's the struggle meal, y'all. There you go. But he took that struggle meal and fed his family and me. So I am family. I look at him as another dad in this culture. We met last night under the bridge for the first time this, this season. Y'all should have been there. 
the electricity. I said, fire, you can't leave me. You can't go. And I'm not supposed to say what two Indians do when they bump heads. I'm going to say it. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, he said, uh, it's time for you and my son, which is Lil Victor. Y'all got to take it over. But I'm going to be right there every step of the way. And I don't want him to just be there every step of the way. I want him to keep coming, keep masking. I, I can't get enough of that. You will never see this ever again once he takes it off. So y'all, please, please pay close attention to anything he does from here on out. Because the culture will never be the same once this is gone. I love you, Chief. Love you. All right, Queens. Big Queen Rukia. Give us a story about Victor and Fayaya, because you be on them streets. <laughs> I've been following Victor Harris, the spirit of Fayaya, since he put his suit on. Obatula, Yemenya. Ogun, Oya. To me, he is one of those spirits. The seven powers of Africa. I've been to Africa. I've been all over Haiti, Voudon, Yoruba, Santa Maria. I have studied and the knowledge. And when I looked at Victor, we followed him. Faya ya. Faya ya. Faya ya. Ashe Cultural Center. We would set up altars and Victor would come. And he would put his suit on, and we would have a ceremony. And it kind of uplifted us. <sighs> All the things that happen as a people, he lifted us up. And that's what the culture is about. It's about resilience defiance. I have been with him in the park giving cutting watermelon up for the kids in the after school program. And I was uptown. I'm uptown. I'll come all the way downtown to help him hand out the books, the book supplies. He always had a kind word. He always showed up in the Treme. He always was about teaching and helping. In his suits, in the meaning, in how he explained, in how he orchestrated, in how he moved, was magical. Absolutely. And to tap in on what you said, <laughs> we tapping in now. Envision those runaway slaves. And it's one of the reasons why we mass is to honor those natives. Me doing my genealogy and me going back, I am that other side of the story. I am Shakta Indian, Halito. Jimmy Chunka. Hello. So I'm honoring my ancestors now because my connection, what I've learned, is all about honoring your ancestors. 
and I honor Victor because he is the role model of my African, me learning everything that I've learned about Africa and the way that he moved in the whole Mandingo Warriors. I know the drummers, Congo Square, the whole community. It takes a child to raise a village. You with your movement, not just your words. People talk. I watch the movement. Everybody can't be a chief. You watch their movement. And I will follow you, because I came all the way downtown last night. I was running wild. She did, she did, she did. I was running wild. I said, I got to go see Chief Fayaya. I got to go see him. And I came down by myself. Oh, you going downtown by yourself? Oh, the Indians gone. I'm like, I'm an uptown, downtown Indian. Yeah. I done stayed in both communities. And they know me. And they know my heart. And I'm about the culture. And I'm about fire, yeah, I, I don't know what I'm going to do <laughs> if I don't see you. It's like uh, something going to be missing. And that's the thing that that's really getting me. It's, it's like I'm kind of scared. And I'm, I'm just looking forward. I know I got to look forward because it's going to be a day where I'm not going to be here anymore. And it's all about our legacy and the kids. So I t took a lot of pictures with the kids. Your role, looking at you, how you take pictures with the kids, how you there for the teenagers and the mothers Absolutely. and how you love them. Absolutely. So one of my role models is you. Big Queen Denise Smith, monogram hunters. She got that fire. Woo! You don't know. You better ask somebody. Well, I have not been in the. I've only been the queen for 12 years. I only I I could always heard about Fayaya, Fayaya. I didn't get to meet him. I would see him on the street. But I didn't get to meet him until I became big queen of monogram hunters. And what I know of him is through my chief. And it, it has always been nothing but positive, uh, just telling me all that they went through and the, the years that they spent together with Yellow Pocahontas. So I am very proud of you. And we, we are friends now. <laughs> we are buddies now. And I love you. And your spirit will never, ever go away. Amen. Never. You will always be. The spirit of Fayaya will always be here. And thank you. I just want to I wanna say I remember... The first year that Fire Yah Yah came, came to light, came out in black, staying on in that street. I came out in Kelly Green, and this was the first crown I ever stuck myself. God bless the dead. We, I mean, Fire had so many people around him that was. My family, his family, we all were family. I went over there, man, and I'm telling you, the first year he put this suit on as a Mandingo warrior, I knew this man. I was in this man's house. I was around him. He was my mentor. But I'm telling you, the first time he did Fire Ya Ya Mandingo warrior, it was a spirit that I'd never seen before. Absolutely, huh? I mean, I turned, I went in his house, and I mean, they had people from the front to the back. They were soaring like, and I'm like, 
I don't know, man, it's just like, man, the spirit ain't here. It's, you know, but this was never presented till that Mardi Gras day. And I'm telling you, I'm in front of, I still was messing with Tootie. I'm in front of Tootie Doe, and I remember this like, like it's yesterday. And we're in front of Tootie Doe and Jerome Smith, Jerome Smith and Tajuk. Me and Tajuk was standing on the corner. And Vic came from around the corner in the black. And me and Tajuk, I was in front of Tajuk, and Tajuk was behind me, and Jerome was standing right there. I knew Vic, I mean, from, from a kid to up to that point, I was a teenager or whatever, but I knew Vic, you know, I, I knew fire. But when that man turned that corner and I seen that suit, well, the first suit was done in black. Am I lying, Chief? It was done in black. And me and Taju standing there. But everybody saying, you know, go, go meet him. Go meet him. I said, meet who? I mean, Vic had, and I mean, it was a spirit on Vic that, okay, he transformed to, to an all-time high that I told Jerome, I just stepped out of the way. I said, no. And Jerome told Taju, you better meet him. But I'm like, man, the, the, the spirit that I seen from way back then and the spirit that was there when he first saw that, it never left him. It just got better and better and better. And I mean, man, I, I got to applaud this again, man. How could a man take a culture and bring another culture within a culture? Nobody would have never thought about what he was going to do. That was him being in touch with his spirit. His spirit brought him there. His spirit brought him to Africa. His spirit brought him all over. You know what I'm saying? But to come up with this, man, what he doing, it's amazing, man. This will never be done again. There, for me, I might be saying this wrong, but in my heart, there will never be another fire ya ya. Because uh, hatred is real if you just watch the news and these young people out here whose lives are being taken away from them because of the way they look, the color of their skin, uh, the way they talk, the texture of their hair. Uh, so you guys have taken this black aesthetic and uh, redefined a whole group of folk. And uh, we, we are getting respect because of this and what you do, what you have done. And uh, they can't take that from you. It's already in the history books. It will continue to be in the history books. Um, where have you gone with this particular art form? And I, I'm not gonna categorize it as folk art, naive art, or however they're art from the streets, but I mean, yeah, I mean, where has your work taken you? I would say spiritual art. What he does, uh, may I? Uh, what Mr. Victor had, I got so much to say about this man, y'all. Uh, it's ridiculous. So uh, I would talk y'all till probably next week. But uh, what he does, still in this culture, uh, Mr. Allison Tootie Montana, I have to say this, y'all. Uh, I usually don't speak. I don't. I don't have the opportunity uh, to to sit on this panel because of my great elders. And I've watched all my great elders speak, and they speak very wisely of each other. I've watched my elders uh, do some things on Mardi Gras morning that uh, we're banned to do now, Mister Dow. Uh, but. On Ash Wednesday, I would see these guys sit next to each other and have a drink or two and discuss what they done out of love. Uh, Mr. Victor Harris suit, that gold suit that y'all see over there. I'm not looking at it right now. I saw it, off, saw it a million times. Uh, doing the tours at Backstreet Cultural Museum I have seven of, seven of his suits lined up next to each other, purposely. 
I call it the Victor Harris collection. Uh, like Gucci would have in Saks, the Gucci side, and you have the Kenny Cole side. <laughs> we got the Victor Harris side. We got Fire Yai side. So, uh, the beating, the bones. He has bones that sewed down to his suit. Bones. Them chicken leg bones. Uh, the seashells, beads in the holes of the seashells. Do y'all know how long it would take for someone to take a seashell and try to put little seed bees inside of it one by one? Go look over there and y'all will see. He does not draw. He cuts his canvas out and he sits and he sews and that comes out. I'm going to say that again. I don't see him draw. I see uh, him so. I don't see him with no color wheel. I've been to the house a few times. Ain't no coloring book right there. <laughs> I ain't seen no big chief yet take a color wheel and match them colors up. It's all coming straight from their head. He's, I explained to the, yes. I explained to these tourists that come here uh, and they come to the Backstreet Culture Museum I have to explain to them. So normally the tour lasts 30 minutes with me. It lasts like an hour and 45. Uh, but when they leave, they left crying. They left happy. But they left with a spirit. And it normally hits them when I show them his all-white suit. Uh, his white suit, I tell him not to focus on the chest piece or the apron. Focus on the mask. Now, the mask itself is unorthodox, to say the least. The forehead, it's not, it's not, it's not neatly, correctly, however you want to say, done like that one. It's uneven at the forehead. The mouth is crooked. The eyes, one is low and one is up. I ask every tourist that's in there at that time to tell me in one word, what do you see when you look at that mask? I've heard regal. I've heard phantom. Talking about your mask, man. Your ghost. I've heard lion. Fierce. Spirit. Absolutely. So what you see in, in Fly Yah Yah Mare? She said, I see a lot of pain, you know. So I mean, I mean, with his suits, your spirit gonna take you where you where, where it need to be. You're gonna get your own. You're gonna get your own recognition. You're gonna get your own idea of what it is. I mean, it's it's mind boggling to me because I mean, we all make we make suits, but man, ain't nobody. How could a man create his own art and? You know, and, and, and it could never be touched. We touch a lot of things from other people, but this here could never be touched because this is all fire, yeah, yeah. It'll never be touched, man. It'll never be touched. But you can try to imitate it. No, but that ain't going to work. That's not going to work. That's not going to work. But because, first of all, to do this, it's not, it's not all to never sewing. It's, it's sewing that's being done with the spirit. A spirit, a spirit of Victor Harris, fire ya ya. Ain't nobody, I can't have his spirit. You can't have his spirit. No, no he has his own spirit. So it's a thing that was taught for me a long time ago when I first started massing. You know, we used to have the meetings at the building, man, on Robinson Street, and it was always, always a question that would pop up that no Indian ain't supposed to look the same. Everybody needed their own identity. Yes. When you find you, then you create you. Yes. You know what I'm saying? He did that. Yes. He, found, he found himself when he was a yellow Pocahontas, and he went over the top with the Mandingo Warriors. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, I mean, man, it don't get no better than that, bro. Absolutely. When, with each one of his suits, and he has that mask on, every year it's a different movement. Mm. 
he he moves in a, a, a different way. He never Every, the same. It never it's ever never the, the same. same. It's like it's a different spirit with each mask he wears. What he does, I think, and only fire you know this. Only fire you know what fire you do because he the spirit. When <laughs> tell I us, think, tell us, tell us. I think when he put that whatever suit he put, if he put this suit on, yes. there's a spirit. It's multiple spirits. That every suit he make, when he sit down and he sew his suit, he sew this 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 type of sewing. It's identity. It's, it's every spirit showing up every year for a different suit that he made. Mm -hmm. But it's still Vic. It's still Vic. Orange, Oshun. You know, it's the different colors yeah. and how he puts it together, right. and it's a connection there with the seven powers. It's a connection that he developed, and we, it's just like you get hypnotized. You just want to follow him. You just want to follow him. You don't even know that you're tired or how many blocks you done walked. You know, the drums is playing, and they're chanting, and they're singing, and, and then when it stopped, you done walked about, what, six, seven, eight, nine blocks, and it's like, how are you going to get back home? <laughs> because the drums ain't playing. It's like, well, somebody going to come pick me up. Go get the car. <laughs> but if you're going to follow them, you follow them to the end. Absolutely. You don't leave yeah, because you might miss something. Yeah. And, and you do not want and, to and miss that's not that's one, that's not one thing yeah. because nothing is practice or rehearsed, exactly. and that's how we move. You know, he scared, he scared me one year. A lot of people don't know what I'm about to say. <laughs> he scared me so bad one year, <laughs> and Chief, I, 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 you know, when, when everybody with, 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 with Chief, you know, and we know Chief, Chief gave us the, the opportunity to leave and go do what we wanted to do, you know, and, and bless us with it. You know, I told Chief, I told um, Tootie, I said, I'm not gonna mess with you. I said, I'm not gonna mess with you this year, Chief. I said, you know, I said, I'm going to mess with, with fire, you know? And um, he blessed me. I mean, Big Chief Tootie blessed me, right? I said, I'm going to mess with fire. I swear, I ain't know what the hell I was getting into. <laughs> I mean, I went, with Vic and he, this this Mardi Gras, he scared me so bad, man. He, <laughs> he, he scared me so bad. Matter of fact, that yeah, I messed with him. Big Merlin messed with him, and Lil Merlin messed with him. Absolutely. And I would have still been fire ya. -ya. I'd have been messed with fire ya, ya today. I probably would have retired with him too, cause I'm old too. You know what I'm saying? But that year, no, no, nah, I'm not saying he old. I'm just saying. <laughs> That year, it scared me so it scared, it scared me so bad that year I messed with him. I put my suit, he came over to the house, week before Carmel, and I said, Chief, my suit was in the kitchen. And I said, Chief, I, what you think? Chief said, hell yeah. Chief said, I'll wear that. You know, I was good. He gave me, he gave me, he gave me the spirit. I said, oh, good. So I'm ready to cut up for Mardi Gras. Not knowing that when I get around that corner, <laughs> you know, on that net, so we in the week, 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 we go out to the house by, by chief. And I'm lying, I ain't lying, man. The man, the man got a ritual. Beyond rituals, you know. This man, this man prepares himself to put that suit on. That's how I know that's another person on Mardi Gras. That's not, that's not Vic. That's not, that's not Vic. That's another person. Man, this man was was in there, man, and this man was like, when he came out, I'm like, Jesus, man. You know, and I mean, he cut, he is another spirit that, I mean, everybody transformed when they put the suit on on Mardi Gras. But this is a part of, of transforming at the ultimate high to the third power, you know? And man, the man, man, Chief, bro, I ain't lying. I mean, I'm gonna miss you, bro, but I know you still gonna be here. I ain't got long. I know I ain't got long, man. You know, God bless me to make a suit this year. I know I ain't got, I'm battling with my health and everything, man. But that's just in us, you know. But, man, I'm going to miss you, bro. 
and I know you're always going to be there. You know what I'm saying? Now you're going to another generation, so I know your spirit is already there preparing to wait. You know what I'm saying? For fire, y'all, y'all, to keep continuing on doing what he's doing. You know what I'm saying? But you're going to be there. But man, I got so much love for you, bro, because I remember from a kid, bro, how you took me. Mm. You took me, bro, from a life that I didn't know where it was going. That's how bad it was, man, in the cell mall. You know what I'm saying? But this dude, man, was, and he was 100 every time you seen him. Like he, I said, do we have bad days? You know what I mean? Everybody had bad, but, but Vic was, every time you see Vic, he was the same way, man. You know? And it's just like his spirit would grab you. You know what I'm saying, man? And it's, we don't have that no more. The Indian culture right now needs a lot of teaching. And the chiefs got to teach. We were talking about that earlier. The chiefs got to teach. But when you take the salt and the pepper, the salt away from the pepper, you ain't got nothing. You know what I'm saying? So the elders are gone now. So if these youngsters want this cult, this cult to continue, man, a, a chief of a tribe got to teach. He did that. He did that. I mean, he could take anybody. His son is ready. Lil Vic is ready. You know what I'm saying? He prepared to wait. But this culture, man, we got to get back to love, man. We got to get back to love. We got to get back to teaching. We got to educate people on this culture. Chiefs got to stand up and be chiefs. Queens got to stand up and be queens. You know what I'm saying? And the culture going to be what it's supposed to be. You know? I concur. One thing I would like to say what uh, Big Chief Kai uh, touched on is your energy. Mm. Woo, Lord Jesus, have mercy. That's oh, really? one workout, uh, Carnival Day. <laughs> Queen, you all right? No, not really. But I ain't going to tell you that. Uh, Chief just had, like, knee surgery out there Mardi, uh, Mardi Gras day, and he's rolling. He's rolling. And I'm like, oh, my God. This is deep. This is deep. Because not only is he, like, performing in the suits, the singing, the chanting, the dancing, talking to the elders in the community, paying homage to uh, the other Indians uh, that have been out there, he, he, he is just like all, all the movement and all the um, energy is just so unbelievable. He goes from like where he, at, he is at now, 70 something, to like a 25 year old. And you're like looking like this is not the man I hooked up with yesterday. It's really a transformation that you get to witness. And then when you see uh, Chief Me to Chief, it is like one of the most beautiful experiences you could have in your life because them plumes hit and it's just so magical. And you're like, I hope these photographers get out the way because they're so disrespectful. It's a whole spiritual uh, uh, thing going on. The, the people are connecting. The queens are connecting. We're like, I love you, queen. Look what you did. Uh, we have relationships behind that day. We have real relationships. These women here are like my sisters. I can call them anytime. And I do mean anytime. And they're going to show up and show out for me. Right. So that's, it's a lot of things that are going on that the general public does not see. And uh, people need to respect the space when they are in the streets performing their rituals. Okay? Yes. They are on that spiritual connection and they're ready. So Give, it, give him their but, 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 space. But one thing that, that has to be understood about this culture is that, like I said, a lot of the elders are leaving now. So it's, it's a thing that's, like I said earlier, that's missing in the, in the black mass and Indian culture is that with, 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 with Tootie Montana, with Victor Harris, they taught us family first, then Indian. Mm. So if you got a family situation going on in your tribe, then you have a true you have a true tribe. You know, anybody could put an Indian suit on, but dude, you have the love of this in you. You know, so we got to get back to family, man. We got to make our your tribe got to be a family tribe. You understand? And that's that's that's, that's you got to do a lot of that, man. I, I 100% absolutely agree with you with that. Also, being a a student of once again. This great man right here. I studied this guy. Mr. Darrell Montana, the son of the late, great Allison Tudor Montana. 
uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think each and every last Indian in here besides myself ran under the guidance and leadership of your father. Is there an Indian in here that masked or has masked? Were you not a yellow poker hunter? Please stand up right now. Everybody look, everybody look around and see if anyone would. Well, the guys, the guys, I'm sorry. The guys, the guys. Uh, you won't see that. So, uh, Allison Tootie, Montana is the tree trunk. The branches that came off of the uh, Big Chief to the tree. Uh, look at that one, two, two huge branches. The uh, spirit of Fai and the monogram hunters, both. Uh, tribes come from the late great Allison Tudor, Montana. Regardless of what you see on Victor Harris's suit, the way it's sold, what he uses, you still see Tudor, Montana there. You still see a hunter right there. That hunter spirit will never die, Mr. Victor Harris. Now, we played Indian for about 25 minutes yesterday, y'all. Non stop. He's close to 80. I'm in my 40s. Tell the people age, man. I'm sorry. My bad. He's, he's, he's about to make 21, my bad. <laughs> but I'm saying that, you guys, to uh, say uh, he never stopped dancing with me. He never stopped jumping. I stopped. Then he got closer, so I had to move away and start jumping up and down. The dude's awesome. Y'all. If y'all never seen this man, y'all better catch him because the clock ticking. Come see him at Uptown Super Sunday and come see him at the Downtown Super Sunday. Hopefully y'all can see him and uh, his spirit. Because I can feel it right now. I want a tambourine. So, Mr. Victor Harris, once again, you have taught me Everything I know about spirit, you did. Take it away from none of these great men, you did. And I thank you for teaching me about spirit and love of this culture, man. I promise you I won't let you down. And I love it. That's it. That's all I'm going to say. As we reflect on our history, you have to remember that there were black uh, and brown people already living here that were not enslaved prior to that whole, you know, cruise from Africa, Absolutely. right? Uh, Rukia, can you talk a little bit about that? This place already had a name. It had a trading post, and it was Bapanta. And Indians ran here. The river, the Mississippi River, that was our middle passage. That's where my ancestors came from Virginia all the way down through, they said, the woods, the wilderness. It was already trails here and where Indians traded and did businesses. Bayou Road, Congo Square was our corn festival. We gathered there. And on those days when the enslaved people were the only people that had Sunday off, the Indians would come in. And since we looked alike, we were still enslaved. It wasn't just Africans. We were still enslaved. And when they say that we were rescuing or putting a feather or fur on other enslaved people, we were getting our people out. The word slave did not mean anything to buy your aunt. 
It was just a piece of paper. So they said, oh, Indians had slaves. Oh, man, you know, yep, they were family. Some of them is, was doing everything what Indians did. It wasn't a whip slash or being cruel. So I mass, and by me being in the culture, me traveling and learning all these other cultures, I wasn't honoring my ancestors. So I had to correct that. And since I've corrected it, I have been blessed. And when I mass, it's a lot of blood ran, runs in these streets in New Orleans. And it's our, our people. And we need to know who we are and how we connect to New Orleans. Absolutely. All of us have a history. Do your genealogy Absolutely. and find out who you truly are. And if you was raised on cornbread, <laughs> look it up. It's Indian bread. You just might have a connection. And when you say your ancestor's name, they say you only die three times. You die when you take your last breath. You die when they put you in the ground. And the third time that you die is when there's no one else to say your name. So this is one of the reasons why I call out to my ancestors. Now they hear me. They know that I'm here. And I am, on their behalf, representing them. And I mass, whereas my mass is the everyday mass of an African American as a black person. But on Mardi Gras Day, we have always been who we truly are. Shakta, Indian. American Indian. And it's just that this culture is so amazing that we can represent and be and come together and for every one of you to see how we transform and how we interact with one another. And it's always something happening. And when you see this play out, like really see them really play the flag, the spy, the wild man, the scout, and when the chiefs meet, it's amazing. It's amazing. And that's what I think we're losing. That's what I think we're losing, is the spirit. Thank you, Tony. Big Chief Victor Harris, we love you, man. We love you, man. I mean, we really do love you. And um, I would like to thank the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Foundation, NOTCF, Mon Graham Hunters, Creole Wild West, and everybody who has made a contribution to making this event a success. There will be a part two, I guarantee that, because we want to know how you sew the way you sew, bro. You got you to break it down. You got to break it down. Um, thank you, Mr. Jack. It came back to me. <laughs> Love you, Miss Christine. Uncle Ricky. Bye, yeah, yeah, baby. We love you. We love you. All right. Do y'all have any questions for Big Chief? Yeah. Any, any, any questions for uh, Big Chief Victor Harris? Or yeah, how come I haven't been invited to? The... I don't have a question, but I need to say okay. 
Ah, wait, boy, wait a minute. Go ahead, G. I just want to say, uh, um, testing. I just want to say this. I just want to thank you publicly um, mm -hmm. for honoring my father. Every year, you mass away from the tribe. One thing I got to say about you, you never forgot where you came from. That's right. That's right. And that, that, that says a lot. Mm-hmm about you as a as a as a man first you y understand y'all please listen to this y'all please listen yeah. to this right here please yeah See? that that says a lot because we know within the culture and i always say this that inside the culture there's a lot of horror and if you're in the culture you basically you know what i'm talking about and if I had to, if I had to have a wish, my wish would be that one of these days we will all come together, not faking. I'm talking about being real. And Big Chief Victor Harris, you're about as real as it can get. Thank wow. you. Wow. I'm sitting in the middle of that just now. <laughs> the yellow poker hunter and the fire yeah, yeah, y'all. Y'all have no idea how I feel right now. Hearing those words from this legend to this iconic legend as well. Y'all give it up for the goat right here. Questions y'all ask him. Let's hear from him. First of all, I'd like to thank all y'all for coming out. Um, really, uh, this has been going on for what couple of weeks, maybe a month. Uh, they pulling me here. They pulling me left. They pulling me right. Uh, but I'm, I'm really, you know, I'm, I'm loving it. You know, last night was uh, Saint Joseph night. St. Joseph night was a beautiful night for us. Uh, all the Indians out there, my tribe, and people having a great time. And believe me, uh, we had a great time. I was seriously worn out, really, this morning. I didn't want to get out of my bed, honestly. I did not want to get out of my bed. I was tired and worn. I didn't know they was going to have this tonight. Yes, it was scheduled one time, and the next time I know it was saying it was Friday. So I wasn't prepared for being here tonight, honestly. And I'm gonna tell you all the truth, I'm really worn, honestly. You know, because last night was uh, a beautiful night for us. And the good sister Kia called me and told me that, Mr. Harris, you know the thing is tonight. This evening, I'd say, what? I say, no, I'd say, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it. But I, I listened to her voice, and I heard, you know, that, wow, she was disappointed. Honestly, I heard that in your voice. And as tired as I was, I'm telling you, I said, you know something? I'm not going to let her down. I called my friend, my spy boy, spy boy polite. Uh, I, I called, yeah, my flag boy. <laughs> and a few friends, my medicine man, Wilfred. I don't know if he's still in here, over there. And I told him immediately, I need y'all over here to give me a hand. And I'm talking about it was three o'clock in the evening. We didn't have time to do anything. But when they come over, right, and I told them what we was going to do, and if we could make it, we're going to make it. You know, none of this wouldn't be up here, none of these things. But really, if I had had time, we would have all the way around the wall, man. It would be all the way around the wall. 
Now I'm going to thank my wife, my lovely wife over there in the corner. The man that's sitting next to her, that's my master designer, Jack Robinson. And I have a master drummer, Wesley, Wesley Phillip over there. We have, man, we have so many. Yeah, spy boy, Ricky, right there. So let me get down serious about this. You see, because all that's been said on this stage have been done, you know. And I appreciate everyone on this stage for all that they have said because they noticed the truth, right? So I really appreciate all of the words that y'all say. I'm running out of words because I'm constantly going to a wall. They, they're giving me this. They call me. They, you know what? I don't know what else more I'm going to say, honestly. But Mardi Gras, Carnival, you know, it's been my life. My life. It have been my, and I'm born into this. The late great Allison Tooley Montana, Daryl Montana father. That's where I come from, my big chief. And there's not a year that I mass, I don't go to his father's house and bring the honor and respect to his father because that's where I started from. I'm talking about a man who stood up for our culture and he died for it in City Hall trying to explain what they were doing to us and how we were being treated. And oh, do I love this man so much because of that. And he lived and he died for it, right? I'm going to tell another little story about Chief Tootie Montana. He has 50 years, 52 years. 52 long years, right? He hadn't passed. He'd gone away. And he's in heaven. Yes, he's in another world. <laughs> Right? So now, Tootie is sitting up there in heaven, all alone at a table, 50 years of massing Mardi Gras Indian. 50 years, that's a long time. Anybody in here been married 50 years or, uh, or ever worked 50 years? It's a long time doing something. I never thought about nothing about being with Tootie at his 50 year table. Never imagine that. Never imagine being massing 50 long years. But when it got down to 30, 40, 49, and then when it got to be 50 years, wow, I'm invited to my big cheap table through his spirit. He had a 50 years. When I made a 50 year anniversary, I was so proud to say I could sit at that man's table. And at that time, he was the only one sitting at a 50 year table. Can you imagine how I felt, how I feel to know that I was the first one to sit at my, my cheap table? I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. You know, I come from a big family, a huge family, a family of 12. And all 12 of us belong to the same mother and father. All 12 of us. I mean, I don't understand a lot of things because in our family, you have Catholic, you have uh, Baptist, and you have Methodist. And I don't understand. We all come from the same blood, the same gene. How can we be, have all these different religions? You know? But that's another thing. We talk about the village. We talk about our ancestors. We talk about brotherhood, neighborhood. That's who I am. That's where I come from. I come from that. We have very little of anything, not enough of nothing, but we made it. We made it. You know, we made it. And all the spiritual talking and this, that, and the other, and the goodness we're hearing and all this about me, it come from my parents. It come from my family, my mother and my father. You know, we had very little, right? But we had love. Yeah, we had discipline. You better do the thing mother and father tell you what to say, to do. And, you know, the, the, the older sister, the older brother, they were the next. They were next in line. 
And they was in charge, man. And you better have listened to them. You better have listened to those people, right? And my mother had said to me all the time, when I didn't understand a lot of things, she said, oh, well, don't worry about that, son. Don't, that, that, that's okay. Uh, uh, you know, God had forgiven you many times. And that's what she said. And I'm still trying to figure out that, but I found out what she was saying to this new spirit that's in me right now. It took a long time. I don't care what was wrong in the house or what was wrong in the streets or what was wrong going on with me or my family or me in particular. My father would tell me, it's going to be all right, Jack. Every, he never said anything else, but it's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. That's the kind of man my father was. You know, and I'm telling you, a lot of love come from my community, my neighborhood. Because community is abroad. But I'm talking about a neighborhood where we lived in the inner city. Right? I had big brothers. I had sisters. I had friends. Tamarine fan with Jerome Smith came along. I joined the Tamarine fan. That's where I learned to, I, uh, became a coach. Like you were saying, I coached the football team, basketball team, baseball team. Thousands of children, man. And I seen them come up. You know, and I watched them cry. And I watched them saying what they couldn't do and this, that, and that. But I didn't show and I, I told him, you're going to do it. You can do it. And stop crying. He knocked me down. I said, you knock him back down. I put toughness in him. I put the toughness in him. And believe me, that's what it's all about. The love that we had in our neighborhood taking care of each other. Because it had not been for us being together, taking care of one another in a village, we would not be here today. Because I'm telling you, we have very little of anything. You know, if you want to say poor, uh, well, maybe poor, you, you, you take the P and put about four O's between the P and the R. You want to say poor? You want to talk about, we couldn't even afford free lunch. Even free lunch costs. You know, so, <laughs> you know. But that didn't stop us. That didn't stop us. History, y'all, if you go back in history, which we all come from, we could understand all that didn't happen in this world. You cannot hide what have happened in this world. You cannot hide that. You cannot hide how black people have been treated in America. You cannot hide that. But the thing about it, that's the past, right? Put that behind us. This is a new beginning. This is a new beginning for all of us. So we're not looking in the past anymore. We're looking ahead. So if we could treat each other Take care of one another, right? Because we all bleed the same color. I, I promise you, if I cut you and I cut myself, red blood going to come out. We up in here, we breathe in the same air right now. It's no different. We drinking out the river, the same river. So what's so different about us other than the color of our skin? Yeah, let me tell you something. I'm in love, y'all. <laughs> I'm in love. I'm in love with this world. I'm in love with my wife. You know, I'm not going to say I'm in love with you guys, but I love you guys. There's a difference in, in love and loving people. And I do love y'all as people because, you know what? You say, well, how can you love us if you don't know me? I love y'all because y'all are human beings. Because y'all all a human being. We all a human being, and I love human beings. We all are human beings. I have love for everyone in this audience. I have love for everything in the world. Everything. Everything in this world. There's a, a story about the spirit of fire, yeah, yeah. Right? 
there's a certain time I start sewing. And I don't start sewing like talking about it like right after Mardi Gras. And they say, well, Chief, when are you going to start sewing? I said, I haven't seen the moss. If this moss doesn't come out or fly from underneath something or come from a curtain, I'm not going to do it. And every year since I've been a spirit of fire, yeah, yeah, believe me, the moss come out at a certain time and it tells me now it's time to sow. Now, who would believe that? A moss. A moss. Like you said, I don't draw anything. I don't. If anything, I draw a circle and everything revolves from a circle. Everything revolves from a circle. And when I put that circle in the middle of my apron, I can go east, north, south, west. I can go vertical. I can go all different kind of ways. So I create the work. I'm not looking in a coloring book. I'm not looking at a sign or something I didn't see over here or over there. I create my own. I create the work. The spirit of fire, yeah, yeah. And the spirit of fire, yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, that's my godly, given, spiritual, cultural name. This name did not come from anyone. This name did not come from a person who said, oh, I'm going to call you fire, yeah, yeah. That name is from above. And you know you guys are probably wondering, it's, oh, oh, because, oh, 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 and what he's talking about? A godly spiritual name. What a cultural name. Yeah, that's the truth. From God, from above this name come from. That's where it come from. I'm, I'm ordained from God Almighty. Not from anyone on this earth. This is why you hear, you hear from these people when they speak of me. The spirit of fire, yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, it's from God Almighty. The spirit. Try to find it in a dictionary. Try Try to find that word in a dictionary or an encyclopedia and see if you're going to find it there. You won't. That's my godly, given, spiritual, cultural name. The spirit of fire, yeah, yeah, is a chosen one. It's a good spirit. That's what it is, a good spirit. And believe me, it's not a black spirit. It's a good spirit. So don't think it's a black spirit. It's a good spirit. The spirit of fire, yeah, yeah, is could heal you. It's, it's medicine. Believe me, it's goodness. It's gracious. It's, believe me, fire, yeah, yeah, is a good spirit. My mother always told me, you don't have to be a doctor to, to heal people. She said, you don't have to be a, a doctor to make a person feel good. My mother always said that. She said, just be a kind person. And if a person know who you are and they know you're kind, and when they see you, even if they're not feeling well, and if you know that person is kind to you, and you know it's a good person, you're going to rise because of the spirit that's in that person. Because of the spirit. I never had much of nothing. Never had much of education or this, that, or the other. But how are you going to define me? By education? If I don't have a diploma, what that means? I'm not certified? What that mean? Without a diploma? What that means? I'm not going to let it tell myself that I'm not who I am and I can't do this and I can't do that. I won't let that happen. I won't let that happen. And my life has always been educated about life itself. What I have seen in this world, I have saw so many things in this world, and how people are, and how they are treat you. That's what I learned from people ways. I learned from people ways how they treat others. And there's a certain vibe that I can feel when I know it's negative. I can truly feel that. You know, I love what I do. 
if I can help anyone, I'm going to try. I'm going to do that. Let me tell a little crazy story right quick. I was coming from my kid's house out there uh, in Kentwood, and a friend called Captain Kicksman, we call it, his name is Frank Mitchell. We coming home, Highway 55, and it was late that night, or early that morning, maybe one o'clock that morning or, or whatnot, and we driving, and there's a car right be before us. This car went to swerving, and then the car went off the, the road, tumbling, passed off the road. I mean, tumbling. Wow. I said, Frank, you saw that? He said, yeah, I seen that. I said, well, man, come on, let's stop. We have to help whoever that is in the car. Y'all, oh, no, we can't stop. I said, what do you mean we can't stop? He said, no, but you're not. You don't know how it is out here. If you stop out there and somebody see us, and they're going to think something different. And sure enough, sure enough, an uh, 18-wheeler, when we went back, I, I, I convinced him to go back because I couldn't think about not helping that person who who needed that help? I couldn't say, well, how can I just let this happen without going back to find out whether this person is all right? And it just wasn't in me. I wasn't thinking about no consequences or, none of, or, or anything wrong, period. Nothing wrong. If I'm thinking about going back to help someone, I'm not thinking about nothing wrong or consequences, right? So here's the 18-wheeler pull up. When we down there helping this man, Turn the, turn the little vehicle over because it was a small vehicle. I think a Volkswagen or something. Turn the Volkswagen over. And here, 18 wheeler come up. He's looking and he's seeing what's going on. What he think he's seeing going on. He don't know what's going on. Right? So as we get this man out of the, the vehicle, 18 wheeler pulled off. I mean, we're in the wilderness too, in the piss dark at night. I mean, the black. Darkness in the woods. Here come the state troopers. State troopers. Boy, and they come out there and they come out there full, running over there with guns out. Because it was a white guy, right? Thank God that this white guy was conscious. Thank God that he never lost conscious. Thank God. They heist us up. And the man said, no, no, you're doing the wrong thing. He said, those people helped me. They said, they, they didn't do me anything wrong. He said, you sure? You sure? that?" He said, I'm telling you. He said, the, these people came back and helped me out of the car. I'm just saying how things could happen. And I'm only saying this because I have a heart. I, I can't see someone in trouble or having problems to, and if I could help them in that position, you understand? In the position they I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. <laughs> Kindness and goodness. I'm telling you, there's nothing no better than that in the world. Nothing. Kindness and goodness could heal anyone. It could heal you even if you die. Because if you're going to die, you're going to be satisfied dying when someone good comes to you and touch you. So healing is like, what they say, a Sherman, right? Oh, this man is a Sherman. He can make, he feel, make people, he heal people. You know, everywhere he go, he make people feel good. You know, everybody's talking about fire, yeah, yeah. Right? No, I don't want to go chief. No, I don't want to go. But 59 years I've been doing this, y'all. 59 years I've been massing Mardi Gras Indian longer than any, any Mardi Gras Indian in the history of our culture. That's how long I've been doing it. And if I did not love what I do, I wouldn't have done it for so long. Not only for my culture, I do it for y'all. I do it for everyone in this audience. For all of you. For everyone, for everybody, believe me, I do it for everyone. I want you to have something to remember when you see me in that suit and I come in your face and, and play with you and talk ah, and do them crazy things and make you feel good about being out there. 
You know, and like they said, if I see a lady in a wheelchair, I'm going to that lady in that wheelchair or that person in that wheelchair because they are out there enjoying themselves. I'm not going to go past them. I'm going to go by them and I'm going to be in their face and mess. Ah, I'm going to talk about fire. And I'm going to put my hands on them. That's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to just bypass people. I'm not just who me. I'm you. I'm every one of y'all out there. What else can we get out of life besides enjoyment? What else? Love. Thank you. Appreciate y'all. I'm not going anywhere. I'm retiring from Madison on Mighty Gras a carnival morning. I'm not leaving the culture. There are other plans for me. Believe me. The chief have to say, well, I need a rest. I need to hibernate somewhat and go clear my mind, clear my thoughts, clean my soul. And get my spirit together. And once I do that, I'm coming back out. And I'm coming back out. Ill yet, the spirit of fire, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. I have plans. I have bared my cross. I have carried it. And I have bared my cross. See the blessing. I had mine. Now I'm going to bless all of those who behind me and those to come and lead them and guide them, teach them. Fire, the spirit of fire, mending a warrior. Ah! All right. Big Chief, fire, yeah. Give it up, everybody. Give it up for Victor Harris. Thank you so much. Thank you.